Now there is one question which I don't want to answer. <laughs> At one time, it was in 1979, I was invited to Portland in Oregon. So there, a woman asked me a question. She said, one day, if a woman had an abortion because she contracted German measles and so the baby is affected. So if the baby were born, then the baby would be deformed and so on. And so the doctor suggested that the baby be aborted and, and then she did. So she asked me this question and she wanted to know whether uh, that woman acquired Akusala. So I said yes, <laughs> because she led the child to be aborted. Now, according to Abhidhamma, life begins with the very moment of Patisandi, not after four weeks or some months after conception. So, according to Abhidhamma, there is life beginning with the moment of Patisandi, and so it is a killing of a human being. But I didn't know that it was she who had that abortion. So later on she told me her story. So I was embarrassed and <laughs> I, I wish I had not answered the question. Now here it is almost the, the same question. Not, not the same, but a very similar question. So I will read the question, right? Seattle said that there will be karma if we kill, even if we kill to shorten the being's sufferings. What if, for example, a being's mother suffered from a serious disease and is depending on a life-supporting system to live? She had beforehand asked or requested her son to turn off the life-supporting system so as to shorten her sufferings and so that she would not be a burden to the family. If the son were to turn it off, would there be karma and will it be a matricide? It's very difficult to give an answer. <laughs> because I'm a monk. So a monk has to be very, very careful uh, talking about the human life, the killing of human life and so on. If we say it's okay, then I may come to a very of, a grave offense. And if, if it is not okay, if the person who put the question had done that, he will be very sorry. <laughs> it is a very difficult question. So my advice is not to have this life supporting system put on any, any, anybody, on ourselves or on other people. Because as in this question, it would be very difficult for sons and daughters to say, just take it off. That means kill her or kill him, something like that. Although it is done with some kind of compassion, it is motivated by compassion, but the act itself is akusala, accompanied by tosa. So it is better not to have this uh, in the beginning, rather than face this dilemma when once it, it is put on. So in the United States, uh, there are now what I call living will. You write a will and say that please do not use uh, this to me when I'm sick or something like that. And you have to do it with, with an attorney and then you say it clearly. And then they will take video picture of that and all these will be kept uh, with the attorney. And then when you deceased and 
the doctors want to put this system on you, then the attorney can show this. And then people want to know, is that suicide? <laughs> Again, it is very difficult <laughs> to give an answer. And also, there are some arguments. Although this person is said to be living, he is like a vegetable. He does not know anything. And so he may not be alive, actually. But his body is still functioning. His body has not gone bad, right? So there is still what is called the life faculty or jivitendriya in his body. So to shorten the life, the, the flow of jivitendriya is called panadipata, taking life. So it is a sad situation if someone is in this. I'm sorry I cannot give you clear answer. Number two is when we do good deeds, should we be doing it because of the merits we will gain or just simply because we want to help? Now bodhisattvas, when they do good deeds, they just do them. They do not expect any worldly results. What they expect is attainment of Buddhahood. So that is the best, that best way of doing kusala. But if you are not a bodhisattva, if you do not aspire for Buddhahood, then you may want to get results also. You will get the results not because you want them. This is the law of cause and effect. Even if you don't want the results, they will come to you. <laughs> so, if they are coming to you, would you want it to be good quality? Or you will be satisfied with inferior quality? <laughs> so, it is good to, to meritorious state that will produce a high quality results. But at the same time, we are not to be selfish and we are not to be attached to what results we will get out of this meritorious deed. But I think expectation we can make that we uh, made this be for my rebirth in celestial worlds or something like that. But in the commentaries, it is said that there are two kinds of Kusala. One is depending on the round of rebirth and the other is getting out of round of rebirth. So one takes you back into the round of rebirth and the other takes you out of rebirth. And the recommendation made by the ancient teachers is uh, to do the merit that will take you out of this round of rebirth. Now that means Whenever you do a meritorious deed, you wish for attainment of Nibbana. You wish for getting out of this samsara. That is the one you should do first. Whenever you do a meritorious deed, then may I attain Nibbana for this meritorious act. But you can also add something. When I am roaming in the samsara before I get enlightened, uh, may I be born in blissful states or something like that? <laughs> you know the story of uh, Anuruddha. Once he was uh, reborn as a poor man. And one day he visited the city and then his friend took him to a rich man who was eating the meal uh, that was worth 100,000 pieces of money. So when the, uh, the man who came from the, from the village saw that man eating that good food, he wanted to eat that food himself. That he went to the, to the rich man and asked him, 
please let me <laughs> eat that food. So the, the rich man said, you have to do something to get something. You will not get anything uh, doing nothing. So if you can be my slave for three years, so I will give you uh, this kind of food. He was so attached to that food that he agreed to become a slave for three years. So at the end of three years, the rich man prepared food for him and then uh, gave the food to him. So when he was about to eat, a Pachika Buddha came, or a monk came. So when he saw the Pachika Buddha, he took the bowl of the Pachika Buddha and put the food meant for him into the bowl of Pachika Buddha. So when half of the food was uh, in the bowl, Pachika Buddha said, Stop. You had suffered for three years to eat this meal, <laughs> and so you deserve to take it too. Then he said, Bhante, I am so poor, so poor that in order to, to eat this kind of meal, I had to go through suffering for three years. So don't look at me, don't look at this life. Please, do a favor to me, and please accept all. So he put all of them in the bowl of the Pachika bowl. And then he made the wish. Pante, as a result of this Ponya Ame good deed, may I know what you know. That means, may I attain uh, the spiritual attainment what you have attained. And also, when I uh, roam about in the samsara, may I never understand the meaning of the word no or nothing. And then, say so he died and he is reborn here and there. And in his last life he was reborn as Prince Anuroda. Now as Sakyan princes, they play with each other and uh, whoever uh, lost had to give cakes to the other princes. And it is said that he always lost. So he had to give his food to other boys. And then when they are finished, he sent for more food from his mother. So much so that there was no food left at the house also. So the mother said, there is no food now. So the, his the servants came back and said, your mother said, there is no food. But he doesn't know the, don't know the meaning of the word no. <laughs> or there was nothing at the house and he doesn't know what was nothing. So he said, okay, then tell my mother to give the nothing food or nothing cake. <laughs> now when the mother heard this, mother knew that my son must have done good deed in the past. And so in order to let him know the meaning of the word nothing, she sent the bowl empty without anything in it and put a lid on it. And, but it is said that when he did that uh, uh, good deed, he shared merits with uh, all beings, including the devas. So the devas who got the share of his merit at that time were there. So they said, if we do not do anything about it, we will suffer or something like that. So they put celestial food say, in the bowl. So when it was taken to the prince and he opened it, it was very good smell, fragrant. And so he said, my mother did not love me. She never gave me nothing food before. <laughs> so from this time on, I will only eat nothing food. <laughs> but later on, he became a monk. He joined the order and then he became an arahant, and he was foremost among those who attained divine eye. First, he made a wish for attainment of nirvana. May I know what you already know. Right? And then, as an extra, he said, <laughs> may I not know the meaning of the word nothing as long as I am in the samsara. So, I think you may do so, or you may just do it. <laughs> Because I told this story and I asked one woman, what do you, what do you think? Which fish do you like? He said, I like the second one. <laughs>
So you, you just made a wish for uh, attainment of Nibbana only, or you may uh, wish for Nibbana first and then put in some more. <laughs> You have emphasized the importance of understanding karma when we do meritorious deeds. Wouldn't then there be a possibility that we are performing meritorious deeds out of desire to gain kusala rather than out of compassion and loving kindness? I think that the, the question is more or less the same. So if you can do the merits with clean heart, I think it's, it's okay. But, as I said, the other is also okay. So, <laughs> the one thing is not, not to be too selfish about that, not, not to get results for yourself only or something like that. A meritorious deed uh, out with the what call, right preceding and us. Uh, Succeeding mindset is superior wholesome karma with three root results. Applies an underlying motive behind the deed. <laughs> Wouldn't a deed perform with no expectation of any kind of rewards, purer and for more superior and hence should lead to better karmic results? If you do not expect if you do not specify, then you will not get the result. I mean, you, you will not get the, the, the other result, right? So when you do something and you do not wish for anything at all, even though you may get the results in the world, you may not get the result of attaining uh, uh, Nibbana. So you, you have to make a wish. And when we make a wish, we do not make a wish just asking something from somebody. When we make a wish, we say, as a result of my merit, may I attain Nibbana or something like that. So, if you can perform a meritorious deed without any kind of expectation of rewards, and so it's okay, then your kusala will be of high quality, but superior and inferior here means being preceded by and followed by kusala moments. I think that you should do. And three roots is not wishing for results or whatever, but you just understand the law of karma. Just understand that there is karma and there are results of karma. For example, a magistrate, magistrate or judge sentenced a convict to the death penalty. <laughs> we were talking about it <laughs> when we came uh, on our way here. What type of karma has the judge acquired based on the above mentioned? He acquired a uh, panadibata akusala. Although he does not kill the, the convict himself, he orders uh, the convict to be killed and so he breaks the rule of uh, abstaining from killing living beings so poor judges <laughs> <laughs> is there any difference between Usma and Tejo in what context can Usma be used Usma and Tejo are the same. There is a saying that are you Usma and Vinyana, three things. So when they left the body, that is what death means. So are you means uh, the life faculty, both physical and mental, and Usma means bodily heat. So bodily heat is one kind of the fire element, the Jodhadu and Vinyana, the consciousness. So with heat pertaining to the body, the word Usma is used. 
Sometimes Usma may be just heat, heat uh, in inanimate objects also. We chant regularly reciting this verse. This uh, will we stop from rebirth, Ratanasuda. See, thus their seed of rebirth have been destroyed and their passion uprooted. Now, by reciting Ratna Soda, you are doing a kind of asseveration. That means you are saying something true and then wishing that by, by saying this truth, may there be happiness. But that will not stop you from rebirth. And Dhammachaka said, this is my last birth, there is no more becoming for me. This is uh, what is said by an Arhant. So when an Arhant reaches Arhantship, then he is happy and then he says, this is my last birth, there, there is no more becoming for me. That is for him and not for us who recite this, this, this soda. And then Karaniya Mita Soda. The virtuous and possessor of insight, having removed greed for sensual pleasures, he will surely come no more to any womb. When you practice loving kindness and then you reach arahanship, then you will have no more rebirth in the future. You will not go into any womb again. Or if you do not achieve arahanship, but you become an anagami, then you will not come back to this sensual world and so on. So, just chanting these sodas will not stop us from rebirth. But what uh, stopping of rebirth mentioned in these sodas are just the facts. Now, in the Ratana Soda, their seed of rebirth have been destroyed because Buddha is describing the the qualities of those who have eradicated mental defilements. So, chanting can give us some peace of mind and also maybe some worldly results like freedom from danger or, and other things. But just chanting will not help us uh, to stop rebirth. As you know, we have to practice. Looking at the 89 chaitas and especially the Kamavajra chaita, we can see that the Sovana chaitas have both Vipaka and Kiriya chaita as the natural extension of Kusala chaita. Given what we know of the Kiriya chaita, why is it that there is no Akkusala Vibhaga Chaita as extension of the 12th Akkusala Chaita in Kama Vachara. I don't understand it. Given what we know of the Kriya Chaita, why is it that there is no Akkusala Vibhaga Chaita as extension of the 12th Akkusala Chaita in Kama Vachara? You mean why that there are no 12 uh, resultants of Akusala. Although Kama Vajra Kusala Chaita has results both uh, similar and dissimilar, Akusala Chaita have no such results. So the results they give are, are always of undesirable nature. Because they are akusala, so they cannot give uh, good results. So since they give bad results, they come in the form of seeing consciousness, hearing consciousness, and so on. So there is no twelfth Akusala Vipaka Chaitas uh, as for the eight for the Kama Vajara Kusala. Does resultant consciousness arise in the seven Javana thought process or 
It functions only as rebirth, relinking bhavanga and death thought process. Now you know the the thought process for seeing. So in the thought process for seeing, there are resultant consciousness like receiving, investigating, and so there are some resultant consciousness that function only as a rebirth linking bhavanga and death and there are others that have more than these three functions the kamaojara sovana vibhaka have how many functions? four functions and the sandiranas investigating consciousness five functions so the, the resultant consciousness have different functions. And the first question is, does resultant consciousness arise in the seven Javana thought process? Yes, they, they arise. And when Buddha mentioned that there are in general six realms of existence, does the Deva realm include the Rupa Vajra and Arupa Vajra? Sometimes the word Deva is used to mean both Devas and Brahma. But in Abhidhamma, we use Deva for celestial or lower celestial beings only and not for Brahmas. So because if we use Deva for both the celestial beings and Brahma, there will be confusion. So in Abhidhamma, we say there are six Deva realms, and these six Deva realms are not Brahma realms. So when talking about Abhidhamma or when studying this book, the Deva realm does not include Rupa Vajra and Arupa Vajra. But in the discourses, you may find the word Deva used for just the beings above the human beings. So both Devas of the six realms and also of Rupa Vajra and Arupa Vajra Brahmas.